So I, I want to just now drive to the ethical and political punchline, which is a point you emphasize in your book really as, as scrupulously as you could, and it did not spare you all of the, the pain that uh, you subsequently suffered, and, and perhaps it won't spare us the pain for having this conversation. But this really is the takeaway message, and again, it's the message you took away more than 20 years ago, which is whatever their origin, me, mean IQ differences are not all we care about. And so we, we, we care about ethics and politics, and we, we want societies that maximize human well-being. And we, for this, we need political equality. And to have political equality, you have to treat people as individuals. It's ethically and it's politically prudent to do this. And, and here's a crucial point. It's also rational to do this because that the differences between groups are not so large that there isn't a substantial overlap between them for every trait we care about. So, that, so and, and given that the, the variance between individuals will be much higher than, than the variance between groups, again, for any trait we care about, but especially what we're talking now about intelligence, it would actually be irrational to read much into group differences. So the, the, exactly tr right. the truth is, I learn nothing about a person's intelligence simply by being told that he's black or white or Asian. You still need to treat people as, as individuals, and, and you, you make it absolutely clear in your book that given the overlap in, in these bell curves, there will be many, many blacks who are far more intelligent than most whites. I mean, so this is, this, again, it all comes back down to honestly evaluating individuals. I, I emphatically agree with everything you've just said. As you pointed out, Nick and I have some of these passages in italics in the book. One of them we have not stressed enough is that there's much more variation uh, within groups uh, than there is between, I mean, the separation is much, much greater within groups than it is between groups, so that the overlap is very large. But think of it in terms of being an employer. And you're trying to hire, you need a really smart uh, uh, guy for a job, and Barack Obama walks in to the interview. Okay, he's black. If you then make inferences about how smart he is based on uh, his membership in a, an ethnic group, you are going to be making a huge mistake. And the same thing is true for not just employers. It's, it's, it's true for admitting people to schools. It is true for all of our interactions with other people. We do not know whether they are people who we would like to hang out with. We don't know how smart they are. We don't know how uh, much integrity they have by looking at them and assigning them a group membership, whether, by the way, it's not just race, but it's also sex and it's sexual orientation and it's ethnicity of a much more detailed form. Any group you want to name, you don't know on the yeah. basis of group means what you're dealing with. It, it, it is virtually impossible to make that point stick. Again, you made that point with absolute clarity in the book. I, mean, I just read the, mo the most controversial sections of the book you know, last night just to assure myself of this. And you make that point repeatedly. But I mean, to give people a taste of the reaction you got to this book, the, the sociologist Stephen Rosenthal called the book, quote, a vehicle of Nazi propaganda wrapped in a cover of pseudoscientific respectability an academic version of Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf, right? I mean, th th this was the tenor of the response, even among intellectuals and academics who were reviewing the book. Yep. When we wrote the chapter, we spent a lot of time in this chapter with, with trying to, to get it right, not just in the technical details, but also in the language. And when we were all done with it, I actually had these hopes that when the book came out, that Dick and I would be applauded for having taken this inflammatory issue and treated it and saying, mm -hmm. this is not such a big deal. Uh, this is nothing to get excited about, but it's something that it's better to, to look at than for people to have these way exaggerated notions of what might be going on. I thought we might get some kudos for that. 
Hmm. And it turned out that people I know of, academics especially, who actually read the book had to know they were lying. Because I'm thinking of specific academics, they just simply know too much about this subject not to have known that they were lying. And they lied without any apparent shadow of uh, guilt because I guess in their own minds, they were doing the Lord's 